Welcome back to Nuno Solutions. This is Nuno. In episode four, I'm going to show you guys how you can create a table with a primary key and a plus an identity seed so that the ID field automatically gets populated and you don't actually have to manually set it. So to do that, first of all, where we left off in the last video, we had a jobs table where we created a, a table with two columns that were not null. The job ID is not null and job type is not null. But you had to manually set job ID because if you don't, it gives you an error. So let's drop the table by highlighting the drop table statement, executing that. And now I press control R to hide the results pane. And I'm gonna highlight this new create table jobs statement. And I just want you to pay special attention to this line here that I've highlighted. So the job ID is a type integer. It's not null, which means that it's a required field now. And we're telling SQL Server, this is our primary key. In other words, it's the unique ID for the record. And by default, that creates a clustered index in the SQL Server. I'm not gonna get into clustered indexes or non-clustered index in this video. You, the other piece of this is is this identity keyword. What this really tells you is that this field is going to be automatically set, right? And it's going to automatically be incremented by one. So basically it tells you it's going to start at one and it's going to be incremented by one. So I'm going to demonstrate that. Let's create this table. We've got to highlight and execute it. And now I'm going to refresh the tables here so we can see our jobs table. And now when we expand it, one thing you're going to notice is you're going to see a little key icon next to the job ID. And that indicates when you're looking at in SQL Server in the Object Explorer and you expand the columns, you're going to be able to identify which is the primary key by looking at this little icon here. And you could also see that job ID is an integer and not null. And job type is not null as well. So let's insert a record into this. When I do an insert like this, without I insert a record without a job ID, it'll work. I'm literally just adding job type, create a date. And then these other fields here, they're just being set to null. By the way, if you exclude these fields like this and just remove these, these null values like that, pretty much does the same thing. It just doesn't insert a value. And I'm going to just insert one more record called hello world. This is the job type of hello world. And if I insert that, it will also work. And now let's pull and look at the data that's in our jobs table. So now you can see we have two records that we inserted and the job ID is getting automatically incremented by one. Starts at one, increments, and then every record that's created, it's incremented by one. So the next record we add will be three, four, five, six, etc. So I just want to show how this identity works because you can make it increment by two, three, four, like it, it's very customizable. So let's drop the table. And we're going to say it starts by 10, it starts with ID 10, and we want it to increment by 10. Actually, let's increment it by 5. And we're going to create this table. And I'm just going to create a couple of insert statements here. And by the way, guys, you can actually do multiple inserts if you just copy the parentheses here. And you just do comma and just paste, the, paste it a couple of times. And you'll be able to insert multiple rows with one insert statement. Execute that, and you can see four rows were successfully inserted. Now, if we pull the data and take a look at it, you can see that the unique ID for job ID started at 10, and every row that it created for going forward, it started incrementing it by 5. So 10, 15, 20, 25. And that's pretty much it for this video, guys. That's how you create a primary key in a database, and also how you control how the auto-incremented identity is seeded. Thank you.